Like when you came in, when you came into 2020, were you like the rest? It was going like 2020. This is a sign. It's like fucking 2020 vision. This is going to be the fucking year for Benny Blanco. It's just done. It, it's just done. You know, it, it, it did change a lot of stuff for me, though. Like I look at I definitely look at life a lot differently and like prioritize things. Like, hasn't it? Haven't you like weeded out all the shitty people in your life? Because it's like, I don't have time. Like, it's like it's not worth it. And, you know, just spending more. I'm sure you're spending way more time with the family and just like, you know, cooking, doing things you thought you never do. And just trying to, you know, you know, just taking every day at a time. I, I you know, it's not going to be back to normal for a long time. No, it is not. Definitely not. And like, you know, out here, I'm, we're just trying, you know, we're fortunate. We're just trying to help everyone in need and give back as much as we can. You know, the the movements have been super crazy out here. Like all the, all you know, it's powerful. You know, I went to, a, you know, I stay inside, but I did go to a bunch of protests, though, when it was happening. Like it's really powerful yeah. stuff over here. Yeah, the worldwide man. Yeah, I was I was talking. I mean, I think everyone I'm talking to at the minute that this is this comes up obviously, you know, because it was like because all eyes are so you know on the media for 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 information, and then yeah. you know George Floyd that happens, you know, he gets lynched like that, and yeah, I mean it's it's been interesting to see. Like it feels like it's been more than um just an awakening to that movement though it feels like a lot of people are going hang on it's 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 everywhere you fucking look the the world's the world's fucking crazy yeah and it's been like that for a while and it's you know i you know and i just you know it's hard for me to realize that there can even be people like that in the world like you know i i you know, I don't know. It's just such a that someone could hate someone just because of you know the color of their skin, the oh, you know dude. their sexual orientation, however they whatever it might be. Whatever that's the thing. Whatever. I know. It's weird. It's weird to me. We have voices to be heard. We have ears that need to listen. We need to be educated. We need to uh, help as much as we can. And we need to, in America, we need to get this fucking guy out of office. So that's oh then, that's the end of my little speech. Now we can get to the fun stuff. Thank Let's fuck get- for music and food. If the world was ending by whatever, that big thing in Yellowstone actually goes off and takes us all out like the dinosaurs. Uh, but we know what's going to happen. What do you sit down to? And what kind of meal? I feel like I'm definitely having sushi. Like there's sushi's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I definitely need like a few tacos on the side. I mean, and like, I mean, I eat so much food. I'm dead. I like, if I can have every like a platter where I can just take a bite of everything, like I need a good curry. Like, definitely yeah. need like the best curry. Fuck, but I need like, I need French fries. I need pizza. I need bagels. <laughs> I need everything. How do you know what's yours? What what's your thing? But you know what? Okay. Well, you know what? Mine changes all the time. Instead of having like a starter, instead of having like a classic starter, yeah, I would I would genuinely sit down to a couple of rounds of uh, of plain bread, toasted, like it's it's like a it's like a it's a white bread that you get back home in Ireland, and uh, it's like uh, it's not pumpernickel in taste in any way, but it's it, it's sort of quite dense like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's but it's a white bread, really uh, sugary and delicious. But you just getting that night. Uh, Slightly not 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 too not too burnt, but just on the edge of burnt. Tons of butter and a cup of tea. I would have about three rounds of that toast. Sleep three slices of that. That's and it. I, well, just well, yeah, just because I would take my time with it, and I would probably listen to something. I, I, what would I listen to when I was doing that? I would listen to probably something that reminds me of a dad. Had an uncle's name with Matthew. You ever you ever heard that song? You know that. Or so Matthews, that, I call it, by John Denver. Yeah. Okay. That would be like a nostalgic starter. Because, listen, if I'm going to go, I'm going to want something that kind of reminds me of, you know, if I had tea and toast and listened to that, 
I would I, I would be uh, surrounded by family and I, you know what I mean. I, I need a mixtape because I want it to be like a DJ set. I want to go like up oh and God. down. I want to like, you know, because I want to dance. You know, you need, you know, I want to listen to. First, I want to listen to like. I think when it's first happening, I want it to be like real. Well, if I, if I'm dying, if if you're dying, it's the last <laughs> thing. Like, do you want to end? like dancing or do you want to end like peaceful like like just be like okay take me away like i feel like i feel like i want to start peaceful like i'm gonna listen to like brian eno or something just to like mm. kick me off like something really peaceful really like like relaxing maybe some like maybe some like tim buckley or something like something mm. something really relaxing like do you know that, do you listen to that ambient music for airports but, yeah, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's course. that one. That one's Some, on a constant playlist for me. I know something, something relaxing. Then, like, I would go into like, if I'm going hyped, like, I want to listen to like the whole like Philly Soul era. I want to listen to like Eddie Kendricks. I want to listen to uh, to Temptations. Then I want to listen to Marvin Gaye. Then I want to like, I want to dance. I want to have like, I want to go into the disco era. I want to listen to like Chic. I want to listen, and then. uh I definitely want to go into like some of like the old like Dr. Dre when he was making like the mixes where he was like mixing mm -hmm. like he was mixing like George Clinton with like whatever like hip hop stuff was out at the time. Then like I want to I want to relax. I, 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 there's def I'm definitely listening to the Beatles at some point. Prince yeah. is on for at least an hour and a half. Like, geez, I the, you, you, the, you've got a, you've got it licked. I've always been picking like three songs usually i think i picked one album last week but this is a, really yeah I'm gonna was, i want to die with you benny what was your what was your one album last week <laughs> billy Conley bites your bum it's a comedy <laughs> it's billy Conley just talking uh really do you have certain milestones like just songs you listen to with people like your kids your mom like do you do you have those in your head like right there like i know the song like thinking about my mom like there's like a bunch of songs we always used to listen to mm -hmm. like 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 we would listen to together like and they stick in your head so much so like anytime mm -hmm. i hear like um uh bonnie Raitt, like if i can make you love me like that one we always listen to me and my mom always listen to like always listen to sexy motherfucker by prince yeah. like back in the day and like my mom was always listening to like to like you know the whole controversy album like i'm trying to think and then like so is that all, where it came from benny like at an early age was that your mom was she like my the, mom she and was my like dad feeding you all this they were really into fucking music like it's like it's like we we listened like like as a kid it was like i didn't we didn't listen it wasn't like the radio like that like when you got in the car we were listening to like good shit like it was like beatles early on stones early on like you know van morrison early on like all the philly salt like all the motown shit all like all you know my mom was really my mom was really into like singer songwriters too so it's like tons of Joni mitchell tons of like like you know my parents are older so my parents are from the you know it's from the 60s so it's like you know my and, and and my dad way earlier you know my dad my dad was born in 1945 so it's like that like yeah so so they were like they they you know everything you know sometimes i'd get into like my dad's car and it would be like one day it'd be like yo yo man the next day it would be like uh like gregorian chants and then he'd be playing like uh -huh. some like some like afro beat like it's just like my parents loved music and they always had like you know my mom there was always a party there was always playing mu music was always on at the house it was it was very like we weren't like a family where there everyone was listening to music my brother like everyone was so into music growing up was your was your my family was very into listening to music but no one did music in my whole family what about you uh yeah music was a big thing in our house too but um yeah the, yeah we listened and played my dad played uh yeah he played mostly actually the other boys i think played in various you know bands school bands or whatever but never really took to but dad played all the time my granny sang and and uh so cool. Yeah, anytime there was gatherings, it'd be a lot, you know, it'd be a lot of singing around the house, and I'd I'd get up and do my bit as well, you know. We uh, never had that. We never had that. 
Yeah, but my my eldest brother, he was an avid record collector coming up, and he, you know, so he had ev like anything that was in the charts or and some stuff outside, but just like a real, uh, just whatever just was happening at the time, he had that. And then the next brother to him, Colin, he was into like the Jam and the Who, and and also had these old eight track, uh, eight tracks of like trucker yeah, music yeah. and stuff, um, country music and western music and um. And then the next brother to him, Paul, he was into punk and the damned, you know, the Sex Pistols and yeah. Uh, so, but it all it kind of all sounded like music to me, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole mash of it, oh, which yeah. clearly it did to you too. Like, when did you, when did you kind of, when do you think you kind of, you know, heard all this, all this kind of musical influence and, and thought, hang on, I can, I can fuse I, this shit. I can, I, I can do this. I remember I was, so, so when I was growing up. Um, tapes were like a big thing, like singles. Yeah. Like, so when I was about four or five, my brother was very into music and there was like a tape store down, you know, because there wasn't CDs yet. So there was like a tape store where you could go down and you could buy singles. And I'd go with, because he loved music. He was so into, it was, he was really, at that point he was into like, re, like grunge and rap. Like you, right. those were his two things in the, in the early 90s. So I would go with them and we would go and I would sit there and I'd hold all the tapes and they had a thing where you could, where you could ch uh, test the tape. Like you put your headphones on and you test it and I, and I loved it. And I remember just, I, I always wanted to go like every day I was like, can we go? Can we go? And then I got to the point, you know, where I, you know, probably when I was like, my, you know how, no matter what age, no matter who you are in the world, you always have somehow if you walk into a house there's some sort of toy keyboard like someone has some sort of you have either that casio one i don't know how you get it everyone has one of those like some shitty yeah. little thing bone tampe yeah yeah i had this really small little keyboard it was teeny and it was like i think it was like a calculator too i don't even know but i had <laughs> but i had it and i was obsessed with it and then like my parents got me this other one at like a garage sale and and I had the and finally when I was like eight or something I got like this keyboard that had like it was like a terrible Yamaha like a, like like probably like you know fifty bucks a hundred but it had like a small sequencer on it and I started like sequencing and I was like by the time I was like eight I was like really into it and then I won this contest when I was like nine to record a song like in a studio. And, and like, I got to do that. When you were nine? Yeah. And then my mom got me lessons. I was, I was, I was really into music, but I would switch instruments every week. Like every week I would, I'd be like, I want to play guitar. Then I'd be like, no, I want to play bass. No, I want to play drums. And like my, my guitar teacher, he was, he was so cool. And he like, he, uh, he had like a dat machine. And we would, uh, he would record me to dat, like, and just like, he would like, rather than we were learning songs, but I like, didn't want to learn them. I just wanted to make my own songs up. And like, my family didn't understand it. Cause they were like, well, why can't you play like this song that you were supposed to learn? And I'd be like, ah, I didn't want to, I want to make my own song. And like, you know, this Not was I also, I was like really into like rage against the machine. So I would like, I like found like, I got like a, uh, 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 a guitar amp from like my friends say so everything was like bad hand-me-downs and i would like i had like a karaoke mic and i like shoved it in and i would like rap over like a over like and put like the distortion on like the bass amp and i, I like I, I think the lack of equipment made me much more creative like because i didn't you know we didn't have money like that to get all the fancy stuff so i had like a boom box and i had two boom boxes and i would like record one and then like record that into the other one, then record it back and like make like, it was kind of like a four track. Cause like you, I would just keep recording back and forth between the two. I had like this little Sony, like my dad had like one of those things that you take to the beach, like the little Sony Walkman things. Like yeah. it was like, they had a speaker on it. And then my brother, he had a boom box. He bought a boom box that you could record. Like, so I started making mixtapes and, I don't know. I just like got really into it when I was early, like like seven, eight. Like I was so into it all my life. I like, wonder where that came from. 
I like, don't know. Like, what, like, because, you know, listen, we all had, like, loads of kids had those, uh, had access to boom boxes that recorded. Loads of us did, and loads of us recorded all kinds of farts and burps and, you know, and, yeah, yeah. and voices and whatever. But not everyone kind of went, like, what? isn't it wild, like, what these choices that you make as a kid that just transform I, your life dramatically? I, I didn't even know what I was doing was, was like, was like multi-tracking i didn't know because i was like how do i how do they get so many sounds i didn't understand it also and i had no one this was before like i remember i remember a big turning point for me was when i discovered like uh uh like i really got into like liner notes like credits like mm. and i i figured out like oh my god these there's songwriters and there's and there's uh like this person played the drums this person played like because i when you're a kid you think the artist does every single thing i used to think the artist was at the radio station performing i didn't understand <laughs> so when i figured that out and then i would play like games where i would like try to guess like who the producer was like based on their wow. sound and like who this was and i would like got really into it and then like once i got into like rap music like it was like i would i would um study you know, I figured out sampling and I would like listen to all the originals. And then I started buying vinyls and like getting really into like not only just sampling. That's when I got really into older music because I would realize I'd be like, oh, my gosh, like the song my mom was listening to is this song that Jay-Z sampled. Like and I like didn't understand wow. it. And 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 then I figured that out and I would try to like remake the beats. And it, it, it was it, honestly, I love like don't you wish you could go back to when you were a kid and you just didn't know anything and your music was so free you weren't thinking like oh is this the pre-course is this the post-course oh the song's got to be like song's not going to be a hit unless it's like this and this mm -hmm. but when you're a kid you don't think about any of that stuff and you just make you just make music and you your shit's a mess it sounds terrible but don't you ever listen back to your old stuff and there's such genius and like there's like a little part of it there's just genuine energy a genuine spark of something unique right you just didn't know well, you know what listen it's me you're talking to boss i i have never had to worry about hits <laughs> it's you that has the hits no but it's like but it's like you know i you it, it's when you think like when you don't think and it's that feeling you get now you know when you're just sitting especially in quarantine like i'll just be sitting alone and then you you get that spark and it's that you get that feeling you can't even describe it to any other human being in the world it's like and everyone gets a different version of it but you get like i get this this feeling in your chest or your stomach when you know you you know you you're doing it you know it's all coming together like, and there's no drug better than it. There's no amount of drinks better than it. There's no feel. It's the best feeling in the world. Like it could cure any illness. Like if any, if, if, if every, if every person in the world could get that feeling we get when you're on the verge of making something, it's, it's, there's, there's no better feeling in the world. You, no sex better. No nothing. <laughs> there, there just isn't. There's nothing better than having that feeling when it's all starting to click no matter what you know when music's just so good it makes you smile and you can't stop mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. you just can't stop and it's like it makes you laugh it makes me laugh when i know something's really good i just start laughing when i'll be I'm alone see him. yeah i'll be alone my girlfriend will be like what are you doing on my headphones and i'll just start laughing <laughs> it's because hard not you, to sometimes and it's you can't something's explain just so it. good yeah it's magic man music's fucking magic if you if mm -hmm. i told you hey how'd you write this exact point like this exact song and this you remember you remember some of it but some of it you just black out and it just happens mm -hmm. do you know what being that i'm uh being that it's the last day i would probably have a a big a big steak can I change it? No, I don't want steak anymore. Yeah, change you know it. What? Change it. Yeah. No, I don't want steak anymore. Uh, what do you want? Well, I was just thinking about... I, I do like that feeling, you know, when you when you get a good steak and it's like it sort of melts and then mm -hmm. the wine with it. I like that. But actually, it does get a bit boring after a minute. So You'd rather just have the wine. Maybe you'll just have wine. <laughs> I just have the wine. I'll just have wine for the main course. A liquid main course. 
I'm trying uh, to No, I would have lobster. I would have lobster with uh lobster with uh, garlic butter. Do you know what? Probably just and uh, and crabs, loads of seafood. That sort of thing. Yeah, seafood seafood's the one. Yeah, but all you know, uh yeah, oysters, Wait. some oysters there. Yeah, like a seafood platter. It's it's really but lots hard. of garlic butter. I'm gonna to listen to that album by Francis and the Lights. The uh, the first one. The um, oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Starlight is it called Starlight? Yeah yeah yeah. Farewell Starlight. Farewell Starlight. Okay, so I that's fucking, what you're... I fucking love that record. Oh my god, absolutely he's, love he's that record. Gen- he's a genius, man. He's such a he's he's such, it's so funny. I always, you know, for me, it's like people say like, oh, how do you decide who you work with? How do you do? And I tell them it's all just the music, you know, it's like I'll work with friends and friends didn't even have a record deal. We did that independently. And then at the same time, you know, the next week I'm working with The Weeknd and it's like Mm -hmm. it's 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 all about the music. And then, you know, I love when all the people when I'm working on all this stuff together, they all kind of just bleed into each other. And then Francis was working with The Weeknd and then, you know, Ed works with The Weeknd and I work with Ed. And it's just like, it's so cool. Like when, 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 when worlds can collide in music. Mm-hmm. We kind of write at such different paces in such different ways. I mean, that, that's what I've always loved about you. You seem to be this ball of just constant energy. That's, you know, you were always, there was always something happening. There was always new artists coming by. There was always a, there was always a new kind of tributary going out from yeah. your studio. You know, you it just yeah. seemed like to be constantly moved. Francis was was in with you for a while, yeah, yeah, yeah. making records and just all this wild dope shit is happening all around you. My writing process is usually just kind of me really on my own going. I have no one to high five. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well done, boy. I wasn't collaborative like at the beginning i wrote everything myself you know didn't you know uh, wrote all the songs made all the music mixed it all myself and then like at once i started working with people i was like oh this is kind of cool and i had never i had never collab and i'm sure you're the same way like at the beginning did you ever collaborate you did it all yourself right not until ed not until i was 38 i hadn't written a song wait really yeah no i no you did i I wrote i wrote yeah, a song, uh, two songs with one girl and one song with another guy, like ten years before that. But like as a thing, they were just friends that I did it with, sort of thing. But no, I never was. You a, never a wrote it. Writer. Ed was the first one. Mm-hmm. First one that ever. How'd, came you, out, yeah. how'd you meet Ed? Uh, well, he he would have come to my show. He, I think he saw me at a show. I can't remember what show, show he saw me at. Oh, it was Y Festival. Uh, I was uh, there down there in Nislopi were there and I think he was working with Nislopi. Do you remember Nislopi? The great band. Uh, mm. great, yeah. Anyway, uh, they were there and then he came to a load of my gigs basically. Long story short, he came to a load of my gigs and then so when he then got uh, the deal in that and was reaching out to people to co-write, he reached out to me about co-writing and uh, actually I had said, I didn't say no I just got back to him and said, "These are you don't need me to co-write," is what I said. Uh, you know, these yeah. the sound the sounds complete as it is, and it's you know I don't know what I would I actually suggest that a couple of writers you know say, "Why don't you try these folks?" But, yeah. Uh, and it wasn't it wasn't me going, "This is shit." I was very clear about that, going, "This is great." You know, I just don't know what to do with it. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not your Huckleberry. Um, and then that so that sort of went away for a while, and then. I can't remember. Did I go to? I, I went, went and met him in Belfast, and then we we talked, and he invited me on a tour, and I was like, you know, thirty eight year old fucking man with a with a kid running around singing songs about heartache and what whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I, and going on a pop tour, I was like, fuck it, why not? I'll never, I'll never do this again. I'll never get an opportunity to go on to like this, you know, this kind of tour again. It'll be the best of crack. Uh, but I really was uh. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for quite what it was to me. He was, he was a, he was a revelation. You know, it was really. Uh, I learned a lot on that tour, and you know, uh, a lot more than I expected to. And loved the collaborative process. Loved, loved trying to inhabit somebody else's vernacular for a minute. You know, getting out of my own head, my own shit. Trying to think, okay, what? Okay, I would say it like this, but shit, this is how you're naturally going at it. So trying to kind of go with them on that journey. You know what I mean? Like trying to help them articulate it the way they're seeing it as well as the way you're seeing it. Quite enjoyed yeah. that. 
Yeah. I remember the first time he ever played me your music. I was in I was in New York and he said, This guy, I think you didn't have a deal at the time or you had like some small deal like it was like he he played it he played it for me the same the same day he played me thinking out loud and he said, I don't know if I'm gonna put this on my album. He said, uh he was like I have a video of us of us the day you played it or when he was playing me his thing and he was like he played that and we like I was like you got to put that on your album and then he was like yeah I'm, I think I'm gonna and then he was like he was like dude you got to hear this guy he's like he's he, he's so much he's like he's so much better than me he was like <laughs> he was like I've been a fan of this guy's forever and he played me he played me this thing I I, I it was so mind blowing and i remember we listened to it like four times in a row it was like this it was it was a really sad out it was like a sad song i got to find it i'll find out what it is and i'll text you and I he was like sad songs. and it was it was it, and we were like fuck and he was like he was like we got to make music like this that's what he was saying <laughs> <laughs> i bet he's glad he didn't i bet yeah. he's glad he didn't <laughs> he, uh, better off making the music you were making he loves you, man. He, he, oh, he I love really... him. He's an incredible guy, isn't he? He's something special. I, know. I remember when Ed had that chef. Uh, what, what's that lady's name? She was so nice. The the girl who was at his house. and uh, Scottish girl, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah. She, she was so good. She taught me. She actually, she taught me. I'd never made bread. I made bread with her for the first time. She taught me how to do it. Wow. She was so. She was so cool and like, like anytime I can learn anything from anyone, you know, and, 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 and it just is like, food is just the most relaxing thing to me. It's like, it's like making a song. It's like, it's like, you just do that. It just takes all your stresses away. Yes. And then to make, and then just to make it for yourself. I love it. I love cooking. I love cooking over fire. I love just doing, I don't know. It's just some, it's fucking fun, man. Well, do you know what? It's, well, it's also essential. You know, I know it's one I of those. Cooked, I've cooked every meal since I've been in quarantine. Every meal Love for that. months, every meal, no takeout, no nothing. Fair play to you. I can't say the same. I, I can't know. say the same, but we just had a baby. We had a baby a month ago. So, uh, oh my God, congrats. Hey, thank you. Yeah. So we've been, uh, we've, we've allowed ourselves the odd night of fish and chips, you know? Yeah, you can do that. We've been making <laughs> fish and chips out here because you can't get good fish and chips. So we yeah. just make we make it out here. And I bet they're good. Oh my god, we make we make it good. I love I love. I, it's so funny they just can't get it right here. Fish and chips. There's bound to yeah. be somewhere like there's bound well, to be they don't somebody do the somewhere, chip. right? They don't do the chips the right way either. Yeah, they're not. They don't cut them thick enough. Yeah, even, they don't even when they try to go for, they either go. It's either just like uh, slightly thick fries, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess, they're like these weird, or, or like fucking wedge, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, it's like too, and then like they're Jenga. too. They're too dark. You can't make you can't make chips too dark. Like they gotta be yeah. like just the perfect amount, and then like a fucking pillow in the middle. Do you know what, man? I've been so excited to talk to you. Well, for just to see you for one, but two because to tell you that uh, I've been watching the show, the oh. Martin Benny Eat Out America. Uh, dude it's lethal you know what when, when i remember when i first met you i think we 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 met on email or whatever but the first time we met in person i think was when we did that malibu right with ed yeah yeah yeah. and i always remember murray and i just sitting watching you you know walking around i was thinking that guy's a fucking movie right there I just put the camera on him all day Sitting around there, he's either making beats or sitting and talking yeah. to Alex. Was it the chef? Yeah, you know, what, yeah, yeah, you know, what yeah. are you what are you making in there? What is that? Can I try that? How do you make I that? <laughs> I know, man. It Wait, was a show no. happening already. I think I remember the first time. I think I met you. Tell me if this night happened or if it didn't. <laughs> I think I met you in New York with Ed, Jay Z, and like. Beyonce, we were like in a garage or something, like singing. I can't. I feel yeah. like we went out. And where was the Heinz Tooth? It was called Snow yes. Trolls Bar. Yep, yep. 
Yeah, I, th- I think that was before. Wasn't that before the writing de- camp? Yeah, that was actually, yeah. I think we got really drunk. I was already drunk at the beginning of the night, but I think we got really, really yeah. drunk. Yeah, I think we all did. Yeah, I was, I was and we were in like the garage. Were... Yeah, we were in a garage like singing, like below a bar. That's right, yeah. Wild. That's right. Yeah, we were out the back. We were out the back of that. They might have to cut out what bar it was then because you, yeah, it's probably illegal, isn't it? Well, definitely oh, was illegal. I remember I was it? getting told off for it before before you guys arrived. Really? Yeah, yeah. When Jay-Z and Beyonce rocked up, it was like, yeah, smoke wherever the fuck you do. Do whatever you like. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> whatever you say. Yeah. For my dessert, I'm going to have a coconut. I know this is just stupid to have a really spicy curry that is sweet because it just goes against the grain. But I want I want the, a coconut fal with pilau rice <laughs> and a big pashwari naan just to make it even more sweet. Oh my god! What's okay? And my my mouth's water. My dessert, maybe red velvet cake. Maybe oh. I like red velvet cake. I love creme brulee too. Um, shit! What up? What up? Yeah, red velvet cake sensation. Red velvet cake, I, and I'm because I'm not usually a dessert guy. I love I like sour things, like 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 the sour straws, like the sour patch kids, but like <laughs> red, something with like red velvet cake or like banana pudding or something. Like I love soul food, so like anything in like the anything in that world, like the red velvet cake, the coconut cake, the pecan pies, chest pie. I love all that shit. Man, you like pie? I like I don't like pie normally, but I like it if it's like a chest pie or like a pecan pie. So like I don't so love you mean like, like that. with the with yeah, like it's the like with that butter sweet. stuff under yeah. on it. Yeah, the soft thing. It's like they have it in like 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 when you go to Nashville and stuff. Like you ever been to Arnold's yeah, yeah. in Nashville? Yeah, of course. So it's yeah. like that that type of shit. Like they make it at all like the meat and threes, and it's like a sugar pie basically. It's like a pecan pie without the pecans on it. I love that. I love pecan pie but i don't love i'm not like an apple pie guy like i don't like that shit i like peach cobbler but that's about it yeah. ultralight beam oh that's just so good so good that's a leveler that song that that's one of those songs that i when i first heard it you know I literally, I was lit. I literally, I just had to play it over and over and over and over and over and over. Uh, and even when, even when I could tell the composite parts and what's I going know. on in it, the spirit of the thing is still just. Uh, yeah, that's an incredible piece of music. That. Okay. Incredible. Okay. I'm going out. To. Okay. Okay, what am I going out to right now? Right now. I think I'm going out. Man, I might go out. I might go out to Bill Withers right now today. Mm. Maybe today, either like grandma's hands or like, or like maybe, honestly, maybe right now, just because it's a beautiful day, I might go out to Lovely Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to go, Benny. Yeah, I think that's for today. I'm I'm probably gonna throw that on right when we uh, right when we get out. I love that. You know what? I might go and do that myself. I know, right? Just to kick up the day a little bit. Yeah, mate. Thank you very much for taking the time, dude. Thank you so much. Whenever you want, and then one day in thirty years, we'll be able to travel again, and everything will yeah, be yeah, good. Right. And I'll be over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>